Uh, now, we welcome our next guest, Mr. R. John Doyle, to the program. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Did you guys miss me? We always miss you. Uh, <laughs> a dead silence. I missed Nothing you. From those two. <laughs> I missed you. Nothing from those two at all. <laughs> I'm wiping the tear. I, I, didn't, I, I didn't trust my voice right at that moment. <laughs> Just yet there, right? Uh, you know, the great thing about Mr. Doyle is that you can talk to him about anything, and he doesn't want to know in advance or be prepped in any way as to what it questions no he'll be fun. receiving. It is no fun. So you can kind of go all over the globe on this one. Uh, John, the first thing I want to ask you about yeah. is Shepherd. I know you're a huge fan of Shepherd University and the yes. football program there. You follow that in all yeah. of college football. Your thoughts on some of the exodus taking place with the transfer portal and the very unshepherd like football season they just had? Well, uh, I, I've been trying to find out a, a, a couple of things, and Matt Miller may know the answer to one or more of these questions. The, the, the most important question, I keep reading in the Martinsburg Journal that part of the problem, and I'm sure it is, is that Division One has, quote, expanded scholarship opportunities and rosters. What I want to know is, is this expansion in all of Division I or only in FCS? Because all of these Shepherd players that are leaving, they're all going to FCS programs. They're not going to FBS programs. So, Matt, do you know the answer to that? First of all, FCS, what is that? Uh, football Championship Subdivision. That's F FBS is Football Bowl Subdivision. It used to be Subdivision One and Subdivision uh, – I'm so, uh, sorry, yeah. Subdivision A – and subdivision double A under under football. Yeah. So Alabama is in the FBS, for instance, and like Middle Tennessee State would be like. No, no, they're an FBS. Whatever. Yeah, they're not an FBS uh, as well. Uh, but like Albany, James Madison North, used to be. They're North now. Dakota they're yeah. State. Yeah. Yeah. Go, Albany. All right. Yeah, yeah. Albany's actually uh, is, is an FCS. Georgetown, uh, Lehigh, Bucknell, Towson. Those are FCS type programs. Dylan Bishop is also on his ears right now. What do you know, Dylan? Uh, as far as I know, the way that I've understood it, and I've heard a lot of this from a former member of the Shepherd football staff that is a friend of mine, that this is for Division One, so FBS and FCS. It's just, it's a, I think it's more likely for a Shepherd player to get an offer from the lower FCS. I'm schools. just, yeah, because I do know that up until now in, in FBS, it's 85 full don't, scholarships. Don't, don't pound your hand, John. I'm sorry. It's 85 full scholarships, and you must have 85. You must give 85 to play in FBS. In FCS, there's an upper limit of 65, but only about half the schools in FCS give the full 65. Some give as few as 35 or so, which is the upper has been the upper limit in, in Division Two. So I was just curious about how all this was was playing out, the, and even in Division. In Division Two, you know full well, Shepherd has always been one of those that makes the most out of its scholarship dollars. Yeah, that, they don't you know, get anywhere never, near right. the upper limit, and and that is why I think if Shepherd had been giving the upper limit of thirty six for the past fifteen years, mm -hmm. they'd have had at least two national championships. Yeah. yeah. And, and many of the players, as you mentioned, that have entered the transfer portal, and we have mm -hmm. uh, a couple of those players that are a part of our Fellowship of Christian Athlete group there mm -hmm. at the campus. We just met last night and got a chance to talk with a couple of those guys, and they are getting those looks from those F. Uh, CS schools, yeah. and that's really what they're looking at. They've gone out and they've they've had good seasons or or a good season, and and have gone. I I believe I can play on the the next level up, and that's what I want to go do. So. And the interesting thing is also I'm told a, a counter move, and I don't know if this applies to both of those football subdivisions, a reduction in the roster size. See, with those, if you're an FBS, if you have the 85 full rides. There are some schools that have another 25, 30 people as walk-ons, mm -hmm. and they, they dress them up for home games. They sit there on the sidelines. You know, you line the whole team up and almost goes from one goal line to the other, uh, even, though, even though they have to officially stop them at the 20-yard line. You know, they're really packed in around behind right. the bench and all that stuff. And, well, they got and, the double numbers. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you got a 75, as long, but they can't both be in on the same side of the ball at the same time. I think they should do away with that. I think they should limit the roster to 99 or even 100 and say you, you, you uh, only one person gets a particular number. I think they should just go to three digits. Like your linemen all have to be hundreds, <laughs> right? So, well, so I did some, some fact-checking, double-checking back here. Uh, it looks like the expectation is that it is FBS is increasing from 85 
to 105 and that FCS is staying at 63. But I assume that the sort of the calculus there is some FCS players will move up to FBS and then the Division II players can take those slots. Got it. From there. Yeah. Thank you. They should have done that during the pandemic when they gave everybody an extra year because that really killed high school recruiting. You couldn't get scholarships because there weren't any available. And actually, Rob, that's when they began thinking about it. Mm-hmm. But, but being a mature bureaucracy, the NCAA has taken this long to get around to implementing it. But, Rob, <laughs> it, it's still – killing high school recruiting right sure. because now that you've got this transfer portal and all of these athletes that are moving from one school to another it's so much easier for a college coach i'm going to imagine to look into the transfer portal and bring in someone right. that's already spent well, but a year still, in school somewhere but else. there's still the same number of scholarships available under that scenario the extra years of eligibility where we now have 26 yeah, year old true. college players <laughs> on their eighth or ninth year of, of, yeah. of football is just and I think I think it is proper to allow a player one transfer. I don't think you should allow any more than that, uh, simply because uh, okay, so a player signs out of high school, gets to a program, discovers you know he or she made a mistake. Uh, okay, now they have a lot more knowledge about questions to ask about the next program to which to go. And they should be required to get that one right. All right, next question. Staying on football, West Virginia has fired Neil Brown. Okay, my question was, why do they give him an extension in the first place? He still had a couple years left on his contract. Coach contracts, especially at the Division One level, are worthless because you can get out of them as a coach any time that you want. So what was the hurry to extend the guy after one nine-win season? And now you've put yourself on the hook for, what is it, uh, nine million something mm-hmm. in order to buy out the contract here? I read an article on Sunday after church before the announcement of the firing had come that in the the meetings that began on Sunday morning after the horrible loss on Saturday that uh, President Gee and um, the athletic director were were still in favor of keeping Neil Brown. And that was all a huge part of the conversation. Oh, that's what they said, And so, (laughs) you know, I... Whether it's true or not, and whether it's over the $9 million or not, I don't know. But, yeah, I'm with you. I I don't understand why you renegotiate a contract after one nine-win season, and I don't understand the buyouts that are a part of these contracts, Um, especially if you're not getting the job done. What other job can I get fired from because I'm not doing my job and walk out with millions of additional dollars? You still Uh, have to pay me. Some big corporations. Many, most. Yeah. <laughs> oh, a severance package of some yeah, sort. Yeah, it's a maybe, golden but, parachute. Yeah. That's a hey. hey, and, and incidentally, I, I, I did not know Neil Brown had been fired. Uh, I was not surprised to hear you say that. I want to go back to Shepard. Mm-hmm. The women's soccer team yes. is in the Elite Eight. They play Franklin Pierce up in New Hampshire this coming weekend. They can beat him. 11 on one, that's a slam dunk, baby. <laughs> He's no. He's old too. What is he? Yeah. Couple hundred years and old. And he was he a was terrible a president. Pre- <laughs> he was a terrible president. <laughs> I gotta say, the women's soccer coach Sam Odell, uh, who's a, a an Englishman, yes, uh, himself, deserves a lot of credit because uh, when I was a senior at Shepherd, 2019 season, I think they won three games. Yeah. He was an assistant on the staff at the time, and I know the head coach at that time drove a lot of players off the team. But they all seem to like him. Once he took over as head coach, it's been a quick turnaround. That's awesome. Yeah, Very yeah. Quick. No, he. I hope they can keep him. Yeah. Turn to politics and, here, John. Not yet. Yeah. On the, because you know sports ball is my life. So, <laughs> um, at the collegiate level, when the the kids get these these scholarships, is there an assumption that there is academic relief for them? Do they are they held to the same academic standards as they're supposed to be? Do we think that they are? In some cases, they are. Depends on the institution. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And the sport. Yeah. And you find the biggest, uh, I think, transgressions at the FBS level because most of those schools are so large that they can find an academic track mm-hmm. that even I could handle. Keeps you eligible. <laughs> well, one more question on this before we exit, and that is, how soon on the FBS, uh, the, yeah. the the top level of college football, I don't think it'll happen on the other levels, 
how long before on that highest level it's no longer scholarships, but it's going to become a contract situation? I think it has to be. With this NIL, mm -hmm. I think they have to just say, here's the salary. Here's, yeah. here's a contract, Yeah, and you're agreeing to be here for you're an employee. one year, two years, whatever, right. you know. So, so that there's some kind of consistency in knowing you've got players that are planning to be there for at least two years, three years. If you want a prediction out of me, I'm going to say six years. I just pulled that right out of my hat. <laughs> think it'll be that long. I'm not sure it'll take six okay. years. I all think right. it'll be something that comes a lot more quickly because the NCAA has to get a handle on all the NIL and the transfer yeah, portal. They do. Classes they do. optional. That'll be the, the yeah. development that takes place. <laughs> That'll be part of my contract. John, your thoughts on the Joe Biden pardon of his son, Hunter? Well, any under the Constitution, any president can pardon anybody, even if it's even if it's a, a, a decision I don't like. Um, I do think uh, it, it, he should never have said no mm -hmm. when he was asked, you know, up until now, will you pardon your son? He he should have kept saying, let's let's see the justice system play out. He should have kept, he should have kept tap dancing. No, it, 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 was, it was not. I don't think he was wrong to pardon him because, again, any president can pardon anybody they mm -hmm. want. Uh, and and we, we've seen some pardons in, 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 in my lifetime that you would go, eh. Uh, but uh, it is, it, it, as long as he would have said, um, basically said, folks, that's up in the air, he would have been all right. I, I just think he's fundamentally wrong to go back on the clear statement, no, I won't. The one I really feel sorry for, and this is it's rare that I would say this, Corinne Jean-Pierre, the, the press secretary <laughs> who's been, no, I said no, the answer is no, no, he's not, no, and now she's got to face the press with mm. and, and try to mm. try to put some kind of icing on this. Such is the life of the presidential well, spokesperson, I, I right? I guess, man, that's, well, that's a tough spot. John Gilstrap, I, I, uh, I, uh, I'm not trying to hold back tears on this because – uh, yes, uh, uh, Karine Jean-Pierre was put in a bad situation, but the plain truth is, to me, Karine Jean-Pierre has been terrible at her job. I would agree. Yeah, so uh, I think her predecessor, uh, Jen Psaki, was really good. Uh, and uh, I think probably had Jen Psaki been there, when she was read, she would have said, Joe, because I understand they had that kind of relationship, Joe, you better not say this because I know you, you might change your mind. And I think she probably would have been able to talk him out of saying a flat no, but that's just my speculation. All right, jumping all around here, John, have you been keeping uh, any attention or have you get it? Have you gotten involved in the middleway situation with the water bottling plant and the controversies there? Uh, I w was unable to attend the last meeting because I was, uh, out of the county seeking gainful employment. But uh, I will be going to the next one. Uh, I've talked to a lot of people who went there. Uh, and and uh, actually, even more immediate and relating to that is tomorrow night, there is a public hearing at Jefferson High School on the proposed new Jefferson County Comprehensive Plan. Uh, I encourage every citizen to go to that if you possibly can, and if you can't, uh, to tune in online uh, and listen to it. This new comprehensive plan, if it is adopted as written, will destroy zoning. There will be no more zoning in Jefferson County uh, if, if this plan is adopted. Is that adopted. a good thing or a bad thing? Uh, that is a terrible thing because uh, the, the purpose of, of zoning is to protect the property rights of people who live in an area where there is a con where there is considerable sit on growth. your hands, John. Sit on them. Yes, I, where there is considerable. This is why I growth. kept you close to me. You see now. Yeah, I, I, I see that. I see that. Uh, you know, if you, if you if, 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 what do the lawyers say? If the facts are on your side, pound on the facts. The law's on your side, pound on the facts. And if you think neither one's on your side, pound on the table. <laughs> So at any rate, no, uh, it, it is critical uh, because uh, what zoning does is it keeps my neighbor from doing something with his or her property that damages the value of my property. Mm -hmm. uh, and you don't need it if you're not growing. 
but you do need it. It is a tool, not the only tool, but it is a tool that is necessary in order to manage growth so that you, a community does not lose its character uh, and while it grows. And so anyway, uh, this, is, uh, this is, is critical that, that we keep it. And there are three things that need to be changed. Um, and I got them written down at home. Don't <laughs> I can if we got into it for a long time, I'd remember all three of them. One of them is there's a statement in there that says that that no no rules shall interfere with anyone's use of their own property. Well, that alone eliminates zoning because the you know what zoning does is say uh, uh, a particular use can be done here, here, and here, but not there, there, and there. Uh, and uh, so it, it's a uh, yeah. But we got to show up at six o'clock, uh, and uh, that's uh, so. Are you no, 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 but back on the water bottling plant, the pr there are three problems I think with the water bottling plant. One is it's so darn big; mm -hmm. uh, it'll be the it would be the largest water bottling plant in the world. It's a million square feet, and I'm told the largest one anywhere else is about what some all a little bit less than seven hundred thousand square feet. So uh, that, that raises a red flag to me. Another critical thing to me is that, is that, that if they're going to let it in, the planning commission should require the developers to put in a road straight from there to Route 51 so their tractor-trailer traffic doesn't go through Middleway. The, the town of Middleway. I'm sure that all of you all have been through Middleway, and and it's a quaint old place. The streets are really narrow, uh, and the place places where these things would turn, uh, it's just just n not worthwhile. Back when 3M was in there, there was some of that, but nowhere near the amount of tractor trailer traffic that there will will be or would be with this water bottling plant. And another one is, they showed up at the last meeting and hadn't revealed in their plan from whence cometh their water. And they finally, in, when pressured by the 150 citizens or so that showed up in a room that only holds about 80 people, uh, the, 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 oh, oh, we're getting it from your groundwater. Well, shouldn't that have been part of the plan that they originally presented? And finally, and this is kind of like icing on the cake, the name of the company that is doing this is called Sidewinder Enterprises. What marketing genius came up with that <laughs> name? A snake. <laughs> or oh, or yeah. a missile. One or the other. <laughs> Either way, it's usually not good for you if it is. Yeah. I want to know what is so special about the water there that somebody thinks that they can bottle it, I presume, and then sell it a la, you know, in Costco or whatever. I mean, it's just because I got to tell you, the water I get, if I don't treat it a lot, it's it ain't all that great. <laughs> and particularly limestone water. No, they would purify it. Any water bottling company, uh, if you read on the bottle, it says purified. They are required by federal law to sure. purify it. And, you know, that's what the FDA is all about. The Federal Drug Administration, or the Federal Food, the Food and Drug Administration. I'm sorry. Uh, at, at any rate. So, no, I actually think. You know, if you could solve all these problems, uh, it, it, it would be nice to have because it's, they're not going to pollute, you know, like, like, some, like a fact, some factories would do. Uh, which shall go nameless, um, but it, but it, <laughs> we, know <who> you are. <laughs> we know what you're implying. <laughs> at, at any rate, uh, but something this size, uh, I do think what they should do, and I'm going to recommend it. Uh, there's a, a new oh the the company is cut with the the the. the uh, um, their, their request was turned down by the planning commission, right. but they're coming back again with a revised plan, which no one has yet seen. And it's and there's going to be another hearing on uh, on December 17th, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm going to go to that hearing. I'm going to make sure I go to that. And the, the the three points I'm going to make are one, the size of it; two, the road, which is a, I think an absolute, uh, and also. I think they should get the Science Center in Lee Town. The USGS, the U.S. Geological Survey, has what it calls a science center for every state. Their West Virginia Science Center is based in Charleston, but it has a branch. The only branch in the state is in Lee Town. 
uh, and they do these things for communities all over the country uh, at, uh, at at nominal cost. Uh, so what they would do is, is is say, well, we'll do this. We will we'll put up X amount of money, and you all come up with it. Let's say it's a hundred thousand. They'll ask the county to come up with fifty, maybe. I'm just pulling those figures out out of the, out of the air. But it, but uh, generally speaking, they don't charge communities a whole lot of money, and they could do a thorough study. To exactly how much groundwater is in Jefferson County, which I think would be an excellent piece of information to have anyway. John, the amount of water that these folks are talking about pulling out of uh, that groundwater, yeah. uh, is it replenishable there? Well, if we have enough rain. Well, we haven't had a lot of rain. 1.7 million gallons a day is what they're talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. And I don't know what that means in relation to what's there because we don't know what's there. But they must, or else they wouldn't be talking about putting a bottling plant of that kind of size there, right? Why? I don't know. I mean, you wouldn't want to uh, propose oh, I would, that unless you thought there was enough water to sustain first it. First of all, we know there's a good bit. Yeah. Nobody knows how much, but uh, it's, it's karst topography. And there's always a lot of groundwater in karst topography. And karst, it's a, it's a particular type of, of limestone geology. And you find it all over Jefferson County and I think in Berkeley County, it, east of North Mountain. Mm-hmm. There's a there's a many years ago when uh, Matt you may remember the the big debate about the North Mountain landfill, mm-hmm. uh, and and that was to be put right where the shale which is North Mountain ends and the karst begins and that was one of the big objections as you have like a seam in the earth's crust there that. Uh, uh, a lot of people thought but was really a bad place for a landfill. Uh, but at any rate, that's that's the, the in Berkeley County, it, 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 certainly east of 81, it's all karst like Jefferson. Uh, from North Mountain West, it's an entirely different geology. Yeah. I understand uh, there is a deadline if you'd like to sign up to talk at this December 17th meeting. That's not too far away as well. No, I think you can sign up when you get there. There's a deadline for for written Written. comments. There you go. Yes. There's the difference right there. Uh, John, uh, we've got 60 seconds left. Is there anything on the top of your mind that you want to just kind of spout? Yeah. I want to talk about 2,000 mules, which Dinesh D'Souza admitted yesterday was based on incorrect information. You're acting surprised. <laughs> How about that? How about that? <laughs> surprise, surprise, surprise. <laughs> Mr. Doyle, great to catch up with you again. Great to be here. Where are you headed next? Uh, take my car to the garage. Oh, good for you. <laughs> Get that thing. You want to make sure those brakes are working tip top, baby. Tip top. A lot of hills in the area. You don't want to go down the hills without any brakes. Thank you, Mr. Doyle. You're welcome. Good to see you again in this segment.